Hello, and welcome to another episode of Flight of the Crow's Wing. Today, we're on the El Camino del Diablo. The El Camino del Diablo dates back at least a thousand years, first used as a Native American footpath and later by conquistadors, explorers, and gold miners. Some of the travelers unused to desert conditions perished on this trail, as many as 2,000 of them. Today, it is accessed through the Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuge and remains mostly unchanged. Entree vu, por favor, on me. Whose house is this? Henry Gray's house. Henry Gray lived here a long time ago. We can have trouble cooking on this stove now. There we go. This stove. We're walking through his kitchen. He doesn't mind. He's gone. It's a closet. And I'd say this would be his living room, bedroom area. I found a lumber mill. <laughs> Henry Gray of Bates Well was the last of the ranchers in the Organ Pipe National Monument. Since this was his home prior to the establishment of the park, he was allowed to continue ranching operations, even though it conflicted with the National Park Service policies. Upon his death in 1976, the land was allowed to revert to its natural state. We're at the Cabeza Priada National Wildlife Refuge. I think that means dark head or dirty head. You're the dirty head guy right there. <laughs> so, you have to register when you come into the site. And you will get to see some of these. The Each visitor must be the following information. Will do. To get the permits, we got online, watched a video saying how we could get blown up or fall down a well or die due to dehydration, and it's not the government's fault. So anyways, here we are. We're getting ready to go on the Camino del Diablo. Dun, dun, dun. The Devil's Highway. The road of the devil. There's more devil stuff for us. We now have two permits for each of us. A permit for the National Monument and a permit for each of us to be going through here. Lots of permits on the dash. I guess maybe now we might be permitted! We have the National Monument permit to come out because we're not on the National Monument now. But we had to put it back when we go back through anyway. There are signs of warning of the dangers traveling this road. We stopped for lunch at Choya Pass. It's a pretty little spot. It's a cacti, bucatillo, all leafed out. Some of them are blooming in the recent rains. They're really cool. When there's no rains, they're all bare and you can see their spikes. And when it rains, the little leaves come out, and it looks like they're soft, and they are not because there's spikes between. Spikes between all the little leaves. Hmm. We managed to photograph a dusky cat flycatcher. Exiting the hills beyond Papago Well, the road leads over the Las Playas lake bed. In dry conditions, as it was for us, it is only a dusty, rutted road. Our truck did acquire a few new scratches in the mesquite. The sharp rocks of the Pinacante lava field was a rough ride.
This is an emergency water station installed by the Humane Borders Organization. In March 2001, they applied for a permit to install these stations. The permit was denied. Weeks later, 14 migrants died and 12 more required extensive medical assistance while crossing the border. A wrongful death complaint and a $43 million lawsuit was filed by their families. The suit was denied, but it was agreed that Humane Borders could install these watering stations. They are now throughout the desert every 20 miles and have been proven to reduce migrant deaths. Tool Well is the intersection of Christmas Pass Road and the El Camino del Diablo. At the junction is this casita, or little house. Tool Well Casita, built with pride by the 832nd Civil Engineering Squadron, Luke Air Force Base, April 1st, 1989. We decided to turn north and drive up and see Christmas Pass. Christmas Pass is a scenic road that takes you up through the drift hills of the Cabeza Prieta Mountains. Beyond that is a boring washboarded road. Over 30 miles of boring. Christmas Pass itself is a rough, rocky corner passing by large boulders. After walking it, I determined for the wild crow it would be a cakewalk. This area of the country is very pretty, and once you get around the corner, there's a nice camping area. The route back to Route 8 takes you through the Barry Goldwater Air Force Range. came across these emergency beacons for migrants who decide to turn themselves in. Or maybe they're for zombie sightings. Brains. Then it was time to air up the tires, bag a pizza at Gila Bend, and head back to camp. The Diablo has had its horns trimmed by the advent of modern transportation, but we still had a devil of a good time. Thank you for joining us on another adventure. Stay safe, and remember to always stay hydrated. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe.